नमस्ते माई सेल्फ अंकिता श्रेया प्रसाद एंड यू आर लिसनिंग टू अलॉन्ग विथ एन सी आर टी इलेवेंथ एंड ट्वेल्थ ऑडियो वीडियो बुक प्रेजेंटेड बाई आर्ट स्किल पैशन चैप्टर फोर मूविंग चार्जेस एंड मैग्नेटिज्म फोर पॉइंट वन इंट्रोडक्शन बोथ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड मैग्नेटिज्म हैव बीन नोन फॉर मोर दैन टू थाउजेंड ईयर्स However it was only about 200 years ago in 1820 that it was realized that they were intimately related during a lecture demonstration in the summer of 1820 danish physicist hans christian oestrud noticed that a current in a straight wire caused a noticeable deflection in a nearby magnetic compass needle he investigated this phenomenon He found that the alignment of the needle is tangent here to an imaginary circle which has the straight wire as its center and has its plane perpendicular to the wire. This situation is depicted in figure 4.1a. It is noticeable when the current is large and the needle sufficiently close to the wire so that the at magnetic field may be ignored revising the direction of the current reverses the orientation of the needle figure 4.1 b the deflection increases on increasing the current or bringing the needle closer to the wire iron fillings sprinkled around the wire arrange themselves in concentric circles with the wire as the center Oyster concluded that moving charges or currents produce a magnetic field in the surrounding space. Following this, there was intense experimentation. In 1864, the laws obeyed by electricity and magnetism were unified and formulated by James Maxwell, who then realized that light was electromagnetic waves. Radio waves were discovered by Hertz and produced by J C Bose and G Marconi. By the end of the 19th century, a remarkable scientist and technological progress took place in the 20th century. This was due to our increased understanding of electromagnetism and the invention of devices for production, amplification, transmission and detection of electromagnetic waves figure 4.1 the magnetic field due to a straight long current carrying wire the wire is perpendicular to the plane of the paper a ring of compass needle surrounds the wire the orientation of the needle is shown when a the current emerges out of the plane of the paper b the current moves into the plane of the paper c the arrangement of iron fillings around the wire the darkened ends of the needle represent north poles the effect of the earth's magnetic field is neglected in this chapter we will see how magnetic field exerts forces on moving charged particles like electrons protons and current carrying wires we shall also learn how current produce magnetic fields We shall see how particles can be accelerated to very high energies in a cyclotron. We shall study how currents and voltages are detected by a galvanometer. In this and subsequent chapter on magnetism, we adopt the following convention: a current or a field, electric or magnetic, emerging out of the plane of the paper is depicted by a dot. A current or field going into the plane of the paper is depicted by a cross. Figure 4.1a and 4.1b corresponds to these two situations respectively. 4.2 magnetic force 4.2.1 sources and fields. Before we introduce the concept of magnetic field B, we shall recap Tilt what we have learned in chapter 1 about the electric field E we have seen that the interaction between two charges can be considered in two stages the charge q the source of the field produced 
an electric field E where E is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught R square where R cap is unit vector along R and the field E is a vector field a charge Q interacts with this field and experiences a force F given by F is equal to Q E is equal to Q Q R cap divided by 4 pi epsilon naught R square as pointed out in chapter 1 the field E is not just an ad fact but has a physical role. It can convey energy and momentum and is not established instantaneously but takes finite time to propagate. The concept of a field was specially stressed by Faraday and was incorporated by Maxwell in its unification of electricity and magnetism. In addition to depending on each point in a space, it can also vary with time, that is, be a function of time. In our discussion in this chapter, we will assume that the fields do not change with time. The field at particular point can be due to one or more charges. If there are more charges, the fields add victorially. You have already learnt in chapter 1 that this is called the principle of superposition. Once the field is known, the force on a test charge is given by equation 4.2. Just as static charge produces an electric field, the currents or moving charges produces in addition a magnetic field denoted by Br. Again a vector field. It has several basic properties identical to the electric field. It is defined at each point in space and can in addition depend on time. Experimentally, it is found to obey the principle of superposition. The magnetic field of several sources is the vector addition of magnetic field of each individual source. 4.2.2 Magnetic Field Lorentz Force Let us suppose that there is a point charge Q moving with a velocity V and located at R at given time T. In presence of both the electric field ER and the magnetic field BR, the force on an electric charge Q due to both of them can be written as F is equal to Q ER plus V into BR is equal to F electric plus F magnetic. This force was given first by H.A. Lorentz based on the extensive experiments of Ampere and others. It is called the Lorentz force. You have already studied in the detail the force due to the electric field. If we look at the interaction with the magnetic field, we find the following features. First, it depends on Q, V and B, charge of the particle, the velocity and the magnetic field. Force on a negative charge is opposite to that on a positive charge. Second, the magnetic force Q V into B includes a vector product of velocity and magnetic field. The vector product makes the force due to magnetic field vanish, become zero. If velocity and magnetic field are parallel or antiparallel, the force acts in a sideways direction perpendicular to both the velocity and the magnetic field. As direction is given by the screw rule or right hand rule for vector or cross product as illustrated in figure 4.2. The magnetic force is zero if charge is not moving as then mod V is equal to zero. Only a moving charge feels the magnetic force. The expression for the magnetic force helps us to define the unit of magnetic field. If one takes Q F and V all to be unity in the force equation. F is equal to Q V B is equal to Q V B sin theta n cap where theta is the angle between V and B. The magnitude of magnetic field B is 1 SI unit when the force acting on a unit charge 1C moving perpendicular to B with a speed 1 meter per second is 1 newton. Dimensionally, 
we have b is equal to f divided by qv and the unit of b are newton second coulomb meter this unit is called tesla t named after nikola tesla 1856 to 1943 tesla is a rather larger unit a smaller unit non si called gas 10 to the power minus 4 tesla is also often used the earth's magnetic field is about 3.6 into 10 to the power minus 5 tesla list magnetic field over a wide range in the universe 4.2.3 magnetic force on a current carrying conductor we can extend the analysis for force due to magnetic field on a single moving charges to a straight rod carrying current consider a rod of a uniform cross sectional area a and length l we shall assume one kind of mobile carriers as in a conductor here electrons let the number density of these mobile charge carries in it be n then the total number of mobile charge carries in it is n l a for a steady current i in this conducting rod we may assume that each mobile carriers has an average drift velocity vd in the presence of an external magnetic field b the force on this carrier is f is equal to nla qvd into b where q is the value of the charge on a carrier now nqvd is the current density j and mod nqvd a is the current i see the chapter 3 for the discussion of current and current density thus f is equal to n q v d into l a into b is equal to j a l into b is equal to i l into b where l is a vector of magnitude l the length of the rod and with a direction identical to the current i note that the current i is not a vector in the last step leading to equation 4.4 we have transferred the vector sign from j to l equation 4.4 holds for a straight rod in this equation b is the external magnetic field it is not the field produced by the current carrying rod if the wire has an arbitrary shape we can calculate the lorentz force on it by considering it as a collection of linear strips dlj and summing f is equal to sigma j i d l j into b this summation can be converted into an integral in most cases 4.3 motion in a magnetic field we will now consider in a greater detail the motion of a charge moving in a magnetic field we have learnt in mechanics c class 11th book chapter 6 that a force on a particle does work if the work force as a component along or opposed to the direction of motion of the particle in the case of motion of a charge in a magnetic field the magnetic force is perpendicular to the velocity of the particle so no work is done and no change in the magnitude of the velocity is produced through the direction of momentum may be changed notice that this is unlike the force due to an electric field qe which can have a component parallel or anti parallel to motion and thus can transfer energy in addition to momentum we shall consider motion of a charged particle in a uniform magnetic field first consider the case of p perpendicular to b the perpendicular force qv it b act as centripetal force and produces a circular motion perpendicular to the magnetic field the particle will describe a circle f v and b are perpendicular to each other figure 4.5 if velocity as a component along b this component remains unchanged as the motion along the magnetic field will not be affected by the magnetic field 
the motion in a plane perpendicular to B is as before a circular one thereby producing a helical motion. You have already learnt in earlier classes. See class 11 chapter 4 that if R is the radius of the circular path of a particle then a force of mv square divided by R acts perpendicular to the path towards the center of the circle and is called the centripetal force. If the velocity v is perpendicular to the magnetic field b, the magnetic force is perpendicular to both v and b and acts like a centripetal force. It has a magnitude qvb equating the two expression for centripetal force mv squared divided by r is equal to qvb which gives r is equal to mv divided by qb for the radius of the circle described by the charge particle the larger the momentum the larger is the radius and bigger the circle described if omega is the angular frequency then v is equal to omega r so omega is equal to 2 pi v is equal to qb divided by m which is independent of the velocity or energy. Here, V is the frequency of rotation. The independence of V from energy has important application in the design of a cyclotron. The time taken for one revolution is T is equal to 2 pi by omega equivalent to 1 by V. If there is a component of velocity parallel to the magnetic field denoted by v11 it will make the particle move along the field and the path of particle would be helical one the distance moved along the magnetic field in one rotation is called pitch p using equation 4.6 we have p is equal to v t is equal to 2 pi mv divided by qb the radius of the circular component of motion is called the radius of the helix 4.4 motion in combined electric and magnetic fields 4.4.1 velocity selector you know that a charge q moving with velocity v in presence of both electric and magnetic fields experience a fourth given by equation 4.3 that f is equal to q into e plus v into b is equal to f e plus f b we shall consider the simple case in which electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other and also perpendicular to the velocity of the particle as shown in figure 4.7 we have e is equal to e j cap b is equal to b k cap v is equal to v i cap f e is equal to q e is equal to q e j cap f b is equal to q v into b is equal to q v i cap into b k cap is equal to minus q v b j cap therefore f is equal to q into e minus v b j cap thus electric and magnetic force are in opposite direction as shown in the figure suppose we adjust the value of E and B such that magnitudes of the two forces are equal then total force on the charge is zero and the charge will move in the fields undeflected. This happens when Q E is equal to Q V B or V is equal to E by B. This condition can be used to select charged particles of a particular velocity out of a beam containing charging moving with a different speed irrespective of the charge and mass. The crossed E and B fields therefore serve as a velocity selector. Only particles with speed E and B pass undefected through the region of crossed fields. The method was employed by J.J. Thompson in 1897 to measure the charge to mass ratio em of an electron the principle is also employed in mass spectrometer a device that separates charged particles usually ions according to their charge to mass ratio 
4.4.2 cyclotron the cyclotron is a machine to accelerate charge particles or ions to high energies it was invented by eo lawrence and ms livingston and 1934 to investigate nuclear structure the cyclotron uses both electric and magnetic fields in combination to increase the energy of charged particles as the fields are perpendicular to each other they are called crossed fields cyclotrons use the fact that the frequency of revolution of the charged particle in a magnetic field is independent of its energy the particles move most of the time inside the two semicircular disk like metal containers d1 and d2 which are called d's as they look like the letter d figure 4.8 shows a schematic view of cyclotron inside the metal boxes the particles is shielded and is not acted on by the electric field the magnetic field however acts on the particle and makes it go round in a circular path inside a d every time the particle moves from one d to another it is acted upon by the electric field the sign of electric field is changed alternatively in tune with the circular motion of the particle this ensures that the particle is always accelerated by the electric field each time the acceleration increases the energy of the particle as energy increases the radius of the circular path increases so the path is a spiral one the whole assembly is evacuated to minimize collision between the ions and the air molecules a high frequency alternating voltage is applied to the d's in the sketch shown in figure 4.8 positive ions or positively charged particles example protons are released at the center p they move in a semicircular path in one of the d's and arrived in the gap between the d's in a time interval t2 where t the period of revolution is given by equation 4.6 t is equal to 1 by vc is equal to 2 pi m by qb or vc is equal to qb divided by 2 pi m this frequency is called the cyclotron frequency for obvious reasons and is denoted by vc the frequency va of applied voltage is adjusted so that the polarity of the d's is reversed in the same time that it takes the ions to complete one off of the revolution the requirement va is equal to vc is called the resonance condition the phase of the supply is adjusted so that when the positive ions arrive at the edge d1 d2 is at a lower potential and the ions are accelerated across the gap inside the d's the particles travel in a region free of electric field the increase in their kinetic energy is qv each time they cross from one d to another v refers to the voltage across the d's at that time from equation 4.5 it is clear that the radius of their path goes on increasing each time their kinetic energy increases the ions are repeatedly accelerated across the d's until they have the required energy to have a radius approximately that of the d's they are then deflected by a magnetic field and leave the system via an exit slit from equation 4.5 we have v is equal to q b r divided by m where r is the radius of the trajectory at exit and equals the radius of a d hence the kinetic energy of the ions is 1 by 2 mv square is equal to q square b square r square divided by 2m the operation of the cyclotron is based on the fact that the time for one revolution of an ion is independent of its speed or radius of its orbit 
the cyclotron is used to bombard nuclei with energetic particles so accelerated by it and study the resulting nuclear reaction it is also used to implant ions into solids and modify their properties or even synthesize new materials it is used in hospital to produce radioactive substances which can be used in diagnosis and treatment 4.5 magnetic field due to a current element by Ott-Servot's law all magnetic fields that we know are due to currents or moving charges and due to intrinsic magnetic movements of particles here we shall study the relation between the current and the magnetic field it produces. It is given by the biot servoirs law. Show a finite conductor XY carrying current. I consider an infinite decimal element DL of the conductor. The magnetic field dV due to this element is to be determined at point P, which is at distance R from it. Let theta be the angle between DL and the displacement vector r according to biot servoirs law the magnitude of the magnetic field db is proportional to the current i the element length dl and inversely proportional to the square of the distance r as direction is perpendicular to the plane containing dl and r thus in vector notation db is proportional to idl into r divided by r cube is equal to u naught divided by 4 pi idl into r by r cube where u naught divided by 4 pi is a constant of proportionality the above expression holds when the medium is vacuum the magnitude of this field is db is equal to nu naught divided by 4 pi i d l sin theta r square where we have used the property of cross product equation 4.11 a constitutes our basic equation for the magnetic field the proportionality constant in si units has the exact value nu naught 4 pi is equal to 10 to the power minus 7 pm by a we call nu naught the permeability of free space or vacuum the biot servoirs law for the magnetic field has certain similarities as well as differences with the coulomb's law for the electrostatic fields some of these are first both are long range since both depend inversely on the square of distance from the source to the point of intersection. The principle of superposition applies to both fields. In this connection, note that the magnetic field is linear in the source. IDL is just as the electrostatic field is linear in its source, the electric charge. The electrostatic field is produced by a scalar source namely the electric charge, the magnetic field is produced by a vector source IDL. The sense of DL into R is also given by the right hand screw rule. Look at the plane containing vector DL and R. Imagine moving from the first vector towards second vector if the movement is anti-clockwise. The resultant is towards you. If it is clockwise, the resultant is always away from you. Third, electrostatic field is along the displacement vector joining the source and the field point. The magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane containing the displacement vector R and the current element IDL. Fourth, there is an angle dependence in the biot servoirs law which is not present in the electrostatic case. In figure, 4.9 the magnetic field at any point in the direction of DL the dashed line is 0 along this line theta is equal to 0 sine theta is equal to 0 from equation 4.11 a DB is equal to 0 there is an interesting relation between epsilon naught 
the permeability of free space nu naught the permeability of free space and c the speed of light in the vacuum epsilon not u not is equal to 4 pi epsilon not nu not by 4 pi is equal to 1 divided by 9 into 10 to the power 9 into 10 to the power minus 7 is equal to 1 divided by 3 into 10 to the power 8 whole square is equal to 1 divided by c square we will discuss this connection further in chapter 8 on electromagnetic wave since the speed of light in the vacuum is constant the product nu not epsilon not is fixed in magnitude choosing the value of either epsilon not or nu not fixes the value of the other in si units nu not is fixed to be equal to 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 in magnitude In the next session we shall use the biot servais law to calculate magnetic field due to a circular loop 4.6 magnetic field on the axis of a circular current loop In this section we shall evaluate the magnetic field due to a circular coil along its axis The evaluation entails summing up the effect of infinite decimal current element itl mentioned in the previous section we assume that the current i is steady and that the evaluation is carried out in free space that is vacuum figure 4.11 depicts a circular loop carrying a steady current i the loop is placed in the y z plane with a center at the origin o and has a radius r the x axis is the axis of loop we wish to calculate the magnetic field at point p on this axis let x be the distance of p from the center o of the loop consider a conducting element dl of the loop this is shown in figure 4.11 the magnitude db of the magnetic field due to dl is given by the biot servais law db is equal to nu not i divided by 4 pi dl into r divided by r cube now r square is equal to x square plus r square further any element of the loop will be perpendicular to the displacement vector from the element to the axial point for example the element dl in figure 4.11 is in the y z plane whereas the displacement vector r from dl to the axial point p is in the xy plane hence dl into r is equal to r dl thus db is equal to nu not 4 pi i dl divided by x square plus r square the direction of db is shown in figure 4.11 it is perpendicular to the plane formed by dl and r it has an x component dbx and a component perpendicular to x axis db when the components perpendicular to the x axis are summed over they cancel out and we obtain a null result for example the db component due to dl is cancelled by the contribution due to the diametrically opposite dl element shown and figure 4.11 thus only the x component services the net contribution along x direction can be obtained by integrating db x is equal to db cos theta over the loop for figure 4.11 cos theta r divided by x square plus r square 1 by 2 from equation 4.13 and 4.14 dbx is equal to nu not idl divided by 4 pi into r divided by x square plus r square to the power of 3 by 2 the summation of elements over the loop is 2 pi r the circumference of the loop thus the magnetic field at p due to entire circular loop is b is equal to bx i cap is equal to nu not i r square divided by 2 into x square plus r square 3 by 2 i cap has a special case of 
the above result we may obtain the field at the center of loop here x is equal to 0 and we obtain b naught is equal to nu naught i divided by 2 r i cap the magnetic field lines due to a circular wire from closed loops and are shown in figure 4.12 the direction of the magnetic field is given by another right hand thumb rule stated below curl the palm of your right hand around the circular wire with the fingers pointing in the direction of the current the right hand thumb rule gives the direction of the magnetic field figure 4.12 the magnetic field lines for current loop the direction of the field is given by the right hand thumb rule described in the text the upper side of the loop may be thought of as the north pole and the lower side as the south pole of a magnet 4.7 Ampere's current law there is an alternative and appealing way in which the biot server's law may be expressed ampere circuit law consider an open surface with a boundary figure 4.14 the surface as current passing through it we consider the boundary to be made up of a number of small lines elements consider one such element of length dl we take the value of the tangential components of the magnetic field bt at this element and multiply it by length of that element dl note bt dl is equal to bdl as such products are added together we consider the limit as the length of elements gets smaller and their number gets larger the sum then tends to an integral ampere's law states that this integral is equal to nu naught times the total current passing through the surface that is bdl is equal to nu naught i where i is the total current through the surface the integral is taken over the closed loop containing with the boundary c of the surface the relation above involves a sign convention given by the right hand rule let the fingers of the right hand be curled in the sense the boundary is transferred into the loop integral bdl then the direction of the thumb gives the sense in which the current i is regarded as positive for several application a much simplified version of equation 4.17 a proves sufficient we shall assume that in such cases it is possible to choose a loop called an amperian loop such that at each point of the loop either first b is tangential to the loop and is a non zero constant b second b is normal to the loop or third b vanishes now let l be the length part of the loop for which b is tangential let i be the current enclosed by the loop then equation 4.17 reduces to bl is equal to nu naught i when there is a system with a symmetry such as for a straight infinite current carrying wire in figure 4.15 the ampere's law enables an easy evaluation of the magnetic field much the same way gas law helps in determination of electric field this is exhibited in the example 4.9 below the boundary of the loop chosen is a circular and magnetic field is tangential to the circumference of the circle the law gives for the left hand side of equation 4.17 b b2 pi r we find that the magnetic field at a distance r outside the wire is tangential and given by b into 2 pi r is equal to nu naught i b is equal to nu naught i divided by 2 pi r the above result for the infinite wire is interesting from several points of view it implies that the field at every point on a circle of radius r with the wire along the axis is the same in magnitude in other words the magnetic field possesses what is called a cylindrical symmetry the field that 
normally can depend on three coordinates depends only on one r whenever there is symmetry the solution simplify second the field direction at any point on this circle is tangential to it thus the line of constant magnitude of magnetic field from the concentric circles notice now in figure 4.1c the iron fillings from concentric circles these lines called magnetic fields lines from closed loops this is unlike the electrostatic field lines which originates from positive charges and end at negative charge the expression for the magnetic field of a straight wire provides a theoretical justification to oesteroids experiments third another interesting point to note is that even though the wire is infinite the field due to it at a non zero distance is not infinite it tends to blow up only when we come very close to the wire the field is directly proportional to the current and inversely proportional to the distance from the infinitely long current source fourth there exists a simple rule to determine the direction of the magnetic field due to a long wire this rule called the right hand rule is grasp the wire in your right hand with your extended thumb pointing in the direction of the current your fingers will curl around in the direction of the magnetic field ampere circuit law is not new in content from bayor sarbat's law both relate the magnetic field and the current and both express the same physical consequence of a steady electrical current ampere's law is to bayor sarbat's law what gas law is to coulomb's law both amperes and gas law relate a physical quantity on the periphery or boundary magnetic or electric field to another physical quantity namely the source in the interior current or charge we also note that ampere circuital law holds for steady currents which do not fluctuate with time the following example will help us understand what is meant by the term enclosed current note the there are two distinct right hand rules one which gives the direction of b on the axis of current loop and the other which gives direction of b for a straight conducting wire fingers and thumb play different roles in the two it should be noted that while ampere circuit law holds for any loop it may not always facilitate at evaluation of the magnetic field in every case for example for the case of the circular loop discussed in section 4.6 it cannot be applied to extract the simple expression b is equal to nu not i by 2 r for the field at the center of the loop however there exists a large number of situations of high symmetry where the law can be conveniently applied we shall use it in the next session to calculate the magnetic field produced by two commonly used and very useful magnetic systems the solenoid and the toroid 4.8 the solenoid and the toroid the solenoid and the toroid are two pieces of equipment which generate magnetic fields the synchrotron uses a combination of both to generate the high magnetic field required in both solenoid and toroid we come across a situation of high symmetry where ampere's law can be conveniently applied 4.8.1 the solenoid we shall discuss a long solenoid by long solenoid we mean that the solenoid length is large compared to s radius it consists of a long wire wound in the form of a helix where the neighboring turns are closely spaced so each turn can be regarded as a circular loop the net magnetic field is the vector sum of the fields due to all the turns 
enameled wire are used for winding so the turns are insulated from each other figure 4.17 displays the magnetic field lines for a finite solenoid we show a section of the solenoid in an enlarged manner in figure 4.17a figure 4.17b shows the entire finite solenoid with its magnetic field in figure 4.17a it is clear from the circular loop that the field between two neighboring turns vanishes in figure 4.17b we see that the field at the interior midpoint p is uniform strong and along the axis of the solenoid the field at the exterior midpoint q is weak and moreover is along the axis of the solenoid with no perpendicular or normal component as the solenoid is made longer it appears like a long cylindrical metal sheet figure 4.18 represent this idealized picture the field outside the solenoid approaches zero we shall assume that the field outside zero is the zero field inside becomes everywhere parallel to the axis consider a rectangular uh, amperian loop abcd along cd the field is zero as argued above along transverse section bc and ad the field component is zero thus these two sections make no contribution let the field along ab be b thus relevant length of amperian loop is l is equal to h let n be the number of turns per unit length then the total number of turns is nh the enclosed current is ie is equal to i nh where i is the current in the solenoid from ampere circuit's law bl is equal to nu not ie bh is equal to nu not i nh b is equal to u not ni the direction of the field is given by the right hand rule the solenoid is commonly used to obtain a uniform magnetic field we shall see in the next chapter that a large field is possible by inserting a soft iron core inside the solenoid 4.8.2 the toroid the toroid is a hollow circular ring on which a large number of turns of a wire are closely wound it can be weaved as a solenoid which has been bent into a circular shape to close on itself it is shown in figure 4.19 a uh, carrying a uh, current i we shall see that the magnetic field in the open space inside point p and exterior to the toroid point q is zero the field b inside the toroid is constant in magnitude for the ideal toroid of closely wound turns figure 4.19 shows a sectional view of the toroid the direction of the magnetic field inside is clockwise as per the right hand thumb rule for circular loops three circular amperian loops 1 2 3 are shown by dashed lines by symmetry the magnetic field should be tangential to each of them and constant in magnitude for a given loop the circular areas bounded by loops 2 and 3 but cut the toroid so that each turn of current carrying wire is cut once by the loop 2 and twice by the loop 3 let the magnetic field along loop 1 be b1 in magnitude then in ampere circuit's law l is equal to 2 pi r1 however with the loop enclosed no current so i e is equal to 0 thus b1 2 pi r1 is equal to nu not 0 b1 is equal to 0 thus the magnetic field at any point p in the open space inside the toroid is zero we shall now show that magnetic field at q is likewise zero let the magnetic field along loop 3b b3 
once again from ampere's law l is equal to 2 pi r 3 however from the sectional cut we see that the current coming out of the plane of the paper is cancelled exactly by the current going into it thus ie is equal to 0 and b3 is equal to 0 let the magnetic field inside the solenoid b b we shall now consider the magnetic field at s once again we employ ampere's law in the form of equation 4.17 we find l is equal to 2 pi r the current enclosed ie is for n turn of toroidal coil ni b2 pi r is equal to nu naught ni b is equal to nu naught ni divided by 2 pi r we shall now compare the two results for a toroid and solenoid we re-express equation 4.21 to make the comparison easier with the solenoid. Result given in equation 4.20. Let R be the average radius of the toroid and N be the number of turns per unit length. Then N is equal to 2 pi Rn is equal to average perimeter of the toroid into number of turns per unit length. And thus B is equal to nu naught Ni that is the result for the solenoid in an ideal toroid the coils are circular in reality the turns of the toroidal coil from a helix and there is always a small magnetic field external to toroid 4.9 force between two parallel currents the ampere we have learned that there exists a magnetic field due to a conductor carrying a current which obeys the biot servo's law. Further, we have learned that an external magnetic field will exert a force on a current carrying conductor. This flows from the Lorentz force formula. Thus, it is logical to expect that two current carrying conductors placed near each other will exert magnetic forces on each other. In the period 1820-25, Ampere studied that the nature of this magnetic force and its dependence on the magnitude of the current, on the shape and size of the conductor as well as the distance between the conductors. In this session, we shall take the simple example of two parallel current carrying conductors which will perhaps help us to appreciate Ampere's painstaking work. Figure 4.20 show two long parallel conductors A and B separated by a distance D and carrying parallel currents IA and IB respectively. The conductor A produces the same magnetic field BA at all points along the conductor B. The right hand rule tells us that the direction of the field is downwards when the conductors are placed horizontally. Its magnitude is given by equation 4.19 A or from Ampere's circuit law. BA is equal to nu naught IA divided by 2 pi D. The conductor B carrying a current IB will experience a sideways force due to the field BA. The direction of this force is towards the conductor A. Verify this. We label this force as FBA the force on a segment of LB due to A. The magnitude of this force is given by equation 4.4. FB is equal to IB LBA is equal to nu naught IA IB L divided by 2 pi D. It is of course possible to compute the force on A due to B from consideration similar to above we can find the force AB on a segment of length L of A due to the current in B. It is equal in magnitude to FBA and direction towards B. Thus FBA is equal to minus FAB. Note that this is consistent with Newton's third law. Thus, at least for parallel conductors and steady currents, we have shown that the Bioservo's law and the Lorentz force yields results in accordance with Newton's third law. 
we have seen from the above currents flowing in the same direction attracts each other one can show that oppositely directed currents repel each other thus parallel currents attract and anti parallel currents repel this rule is the opposite of what we find in electrostatics like same sign charges repel each other but like parallel currents attract each other let fba represent the magnitude of force fba per unit length then from equation 4.2.3 fba is equal to nu not ia ib divided by 2 pi d the above expression is used to define the ampere which is one of the seven si based units the ampere is the value of the steady current which when maintained in each of the two very long straight parallel conductors of negligible cross section and placed 1 meter apart in vacuum would produce on each of these conductors a force equal to 4 into 10 to the power minus 7 newtons per meter of length this definition of the ampere was adapted in 1946 it is a theoretical definitions in practice one must eliminate the effect of earth's magnetic field and substitute very long wave by multi turn coils of appropriate geometries an instrument called the current balance is used to measure this mechanical force the si unit of charge namely the coulomb can now be defined in terms of the ampere when a steady current of 1a is set up in a conductor the quantity of the charge that flows through its cross section in 1 second is 1 coulomb 1c it turns out that when we have time dependent currents and or change in motion newton's third law may not hold for forces between charges and or conductors an essential consequence of the newton's third law in mechanics is conservation of momentum of an isolated system this however holds even for the cases of time dependent situation with electromagnetic field provided the momentum carried by field is known taken into accounts 4.10 torque on current loop magnetic dipole 4.10.1 torque on a rectangular current loop in a uniform magnetic field now shows that rectangular loop carrying a steady current i and placed in a uniform magnetic field experiences a torque it does not experiences a net force this behavior is analogous to that of electric dipole in a uniform electric field section 1.12 we first consider the simple case when the rectangular loop is placed such that uniform magnetic field b is in the place of the loop this is illustrated in figure 4.21 a the field exerts no force on the two arms AD and BC of the loop it is perpendicular to the arm of AB of the loop and exerts a force F1 on it which is directed into the plane of the loop its magnitude is F1 IBB similarly it exerts a force F2 on the arm CD and F2 is directed out of the plane of the paper F2 is equal to IBB is equal to F1. Thus, the net force on the loop is zero. There is a torque on the loop due to the pair of forces F1 and F2. Figure 4.21 shows a V of loop from ADN. It shows that a torque on the loop tends to rotate it anti-clockwise. The torque is in magnitude. torque is equal to f1 a by 2 plus f2 a by 2 is equal to ibb a by 2 plus ibb a divided by 2 is equal to iab into b is equal to iab where a is equal to ab 
is the area of rectangle we next consider the case when the plane of the loop is not along the magnetic field but makes an angle with it we take the angle between the field and the normal to the coil to be angle theta the previous case corresponds to theta is equal to pi by 2 figure 4.22 illustrates this general case the forces on the arms bc and da are equal opposite and act along the axis of the coil which connects the center of mass of ba and da b in collinear along the axis they cancel each other resulting in no net force or torque the forces on arm ab and cd are f1 and f2 they two are equal and opposite with magnitude f1 is equal to f2 is equal to ibb but they are not collinear this results in a couple as before the torque is however less than the earlier case when plane of loop was along the magnetic field this is because the perpendicular distance between the force of the couple has decreased figure 4.22b is a view of the arrangement from the ad and and it illustrates these two forces constituting a couple the magnitude of the torque on the loop is torque f1 a divided by 2 sin theta plus f2 a by 2 sin theta is equal to i a b b sin theta i a b sin theta as theta is, tends to zero the perpendicular distance between the forces of the couple also approaches zero this makes the force collinear and the net force and the torque zero the torques in equation 4.26 and 4.27 can be expressed as vector product of the magnetic moment of the coil and the magnetic field we define the magnetic moment of the current loop as m is equal to ia where the direction of the area vector a is given by the right hand thumb rule and is directed into the plane of paper in figure 4.21 then as the angle between m and b is theta equation 4.26 and 4.27 can be expressed by one expression tesla is equal to m into b that is analogous to the electrostatic case electric dipole of dipole moment p in an electric field e torque is equal to pe into e as is clear from equation 4.28 the dimension of the magnetic moment are a square and its unit is am square from equation 4.29 we see that the torque vanishes when m is either parallel or anti parallel to the magnetic field b this indicates a state of equilibrium as there is no torque on the coil this also applies to any object with a magnetic moment m when m and b are parallel the equilibrium is a stable one any small rotation of the coil produces a torque which brings it back to its original position when they are anti parallel the equilibrium is unstable as any rotation produced such a torque which increases with the amount of rotation the presence of this torque is also the reason why a small magnet or any magnetic dipole aligns itself with the external magnetic field if the loop has n closely on turns the expression for torque equation 4.29 still holds with m is equal to na 4.10.2 circular current loops as a magnetic dipole in this section we shall consider the elementary magnetic element the current loop we shall show that the magnetic field at large distances due to current in a circular current loop is very similar in behavior to the electric field of an electric dipole in section 4.6 
we have evaluated the magnetic field on the axis of a circular loop of a radius r carrying a steady current i the magnitude of this field is b is equal to nu not i r square divided by 2 x square plus r square to the power of r by 3 by 2 and this direction is along the axis and given by the right hand thumb rule here x is the distance along the axis from the center of the loop for x is greater than r we may drop the r square in the term denominator thus b is equal to nu not i r square divided by 2 x cube note that the area of the loop a is equal to pi r square thus b is equal to nu not i a divided by 2 pi x cube as earlier we define the magnetic moment m to have a magnitude i a m is equal to i a hence b is equal to nu not m divided by 2 pi x cube is equal to nu not 4 pi 2 m divided by x cube the expression of equation 4.231a is very similar to an expression obtained earlier for the electric field of dipole the similarity may be seen if we substitute nu not i 1 divided by epsilon not m tends to pe electrostatic dipole be tends to e electrostatic field we then obtain e is equal to pe divided by 4 pi epsilon not x cube which is precisely the field for an electric dipole at a point on its axis considered in chapter 1 section 1.10 it can be shown that the above analogy can be carried further we had found in chapter 1 that the electric field on the perpendicular bisector of the dipole is given by c equation 1.2.1 e is equivalence to pe 4 pi epsilon not r cube where x is the distance from the dipole if we replace p tends to m and nu not 1 divided by epsilon not the above expression we obtain the result for b for a point in the plane of the loop at a distance x from the center for x greater than r b is equivalent to nu not 4 pi into m divided by x cube x greater than r the results given by equation 4.31a and 4.31b become exact for a point magnetic dipole the result obtained above can be shown to apply to any planar loop a planar current loop is equivalent to a magnetic dipole of dipole moment m is equal to ia which is the analog of the electric dipole moment p note however a fundamental difference an electric dipole is built up of two elementary units the charges or electric monopoles in magnetism a magnetic dipole or a current loop is the most elementary element the equivalent of electric charges that is magnetic monopoles are not known to exist we have shown that current loop when produces a magnetic field see figure 4.12 and behave like magnetic dipole at large distances and second is subject to torque like a magnetic needle this led ampere to suggest that all magnetism is due to circulating current this seems to be partly true and no magnetic monopoles have been seen so far however the elementary particles such as an electron or protons also carry a intrinsic magnetic moment not accounted by circulating currents 4.10.3 the magnetic dipole moment of a revolving electron in chapter 12 we shall read about the bohr's model of the hydrogen atom you may perhaps have heard of this model which was proposed by danish physicist niels bohr in 1911 and was stepping stone to a new kind of mechanics 
namely quantum mechanics in the bose model the electron a negatively charged particle revolves around a positively charged nucleus much as a planet revolves around the sun the force in the former case is electrostatic coulomb's force while it is gravitational for the planet sun case we show this bose picture of the electron in figure 4.23 the electron of charge minus e is equal to e is equal to plus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs per form uniform circular motion around a stationary heavy nucleus of charge plus the d this continues a current i where i is equal to et and t is the time period of revolution let r be the orbit radius of the electron and v the orbital speed then t is equal to 2 pi r divided by v substituting in equation 4.32 we have i is equal to ev divided by 2 pi r there will be a magnetic moment usually denoted by nu not associated with the circulating current from equation 4.28 its magnitude is nu l is equal to i pi r square is equal to e v r divided by 2 the direction of this magnetic moment is into the plane of the paper in figure 4.23 this follows from the right hand rule discussed earlier and the fact that the negatively charged electron is moving anti clockwise leading to a clockwise current multiplying and dividing the right hand side of the above expression by the electron mass mv we have nu l is equal to e divided by 2 me me vr is equal to e2 me l here l is the magnitude of the angular momentum of the electron about the central nucleus orbital angular momentum vectorially nu l is equal to minus e divided by 2 mel the negative sign indicates that the angular momentum of the electron is opposite in the direction to the magnetic moment instead of electron with charge minus e if we had taken a particle with charge plus q the angular momentum and magnetic moment would be in the same direction the ratio is called the Gyrum magnetic ratio and is a constant. Its value is 8.8 into 10 to the power 10 ckg for an electron, which has been verified by experiments. The fact that even at an atomic level there is a magnetic moment confirms Ampere's blood hypothesis of atomic magnetic moments. This, according to Ampere's old help want to explain the magnetic properties of materials can one assess a value to this atomic dipole moment the answer is s yes. one can do within a bohr's model bohr hypothesis that the angular momentum assumes a discrete set of values namely l is equal to ns divided by 2 pi where n is a natural number n is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 and so on h is a constant named after max planck planck's constant which a value h is equal to 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joules per second the condition of discreteness is called the bose quantization condition we shall discuss it in detail in chapter 12 our aim here is main really to use it to calculate the elementary dipole moment they take the value and is equal to 1 we have from equation 4.34 that new l minimum is equal to e by 4 pi m e h is equal to 1.60 into 10 to the power minus 19 into 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 3 4 divided by 4 into 3.14 into 9.11 into 10 to the power minus 31 is equal to 
9.27 into 10 to the power minus 24 a meter square where the subscript minimum starts for minimum this value is called the Bohr's magneton any charge in the uniform circular motion would have an associated magnetic moment given by an expression similar to equation 4.34 this dipole moment is labeled as the orbital magnetic moment hence the subscripts ln nu l beside the orbital moment the electron as an interesting magnetic moment which has the same numerical value as given in equation 4.37 it is called the spin magnetic moment but we hasten to add that it is not as true the electron is spinning the electron is an elementary particle and it does not have any access to spin around like a top or our earth nevertheless it does possesses this intrinsic magnetic moment the microscope roots of magnetism in iron and other materials can be traced back to this intrinsic spin magnetic moment 4.11 the moving coil galvanometer currents and voltage in the circuits have been discussed extensively in the chapter 3 but how do we measure them how do we claim that current in circuit is 1.5 a or the voltage drop across a resistor is 1.2 v figure 4.27 exhibits a very useful instrument for this purpose the moving coil galvanometer mgc it is device whose principle can be understood on the basis of our discussion in section 4.10 the galvanometer consists of a coil with many turns free to rotate about a fixed axis in a uniform radical magnetic field there is a cylindrical soft iron core which not only makes the field radial but also increases the strength of the magnetic field when a current flows through the coil a torque acts on it this torque is given by equation 4.26 to be torque n i a b where the symbol have their usual meaning since the field is radial by the design we have taken sin theta is equal to 1 in the above expression for the torque the magnetic torque niab tends to rotate the coil the spring sp provides a counter torque k naught that balance the magnetic torque niab resulting in a steady angular deflection not in equilibrium k naught is equal to niab where k is the torsional constant of the spring that is restoring torque per unit twist the deflection knot is indicated on the scale by a point knot attached to the spring we have knot is equal to nab divided by k into i the quantity in brackets is a constant for a given galvanometer the galvanometer can be used in number of ways it can be used as a detector to check if a current is flowing in the circuit. We have come across this usage in the V stone bridge arrangement. In this usage, the neutral position of the point when no current is flowing through the galvanometer is the middle of the scale and not at the left end as shown in figure 4.24. Depending on the direction of the current, the point nurse deflection is either to the right or the left. The galvanometer cannot as such be used as the ammeter to measure the value of the current in a given circuit. This is for two reasons. First, galvanometer is a very sensitive device. It gives a full scale scale deflection for a current of the order nu a second for measuring currents the galvanometer has to be connected in series 
and as it has a large resistance this will change the value of the current in the circuit to overcome these difficulties one attaches a small resistance rs called stunt resistance in parallel with the galvanometer coil so that most of the current passes through the stunt the resistance of this arrangement is rgsr divided by rg plus rs equivalent to rs if rg greater than small rs if small rs has small value in relation to the resistance of the rest of the circuit rc the effect of introducing the measuring instrument is also small and negligible this arrangement is schematically shown in figure 4.25 the scale of this ammeter is calibrated and then granulated to read of the current value with ease we define the current sensitivity of the galvanometer as the deflection per unit current from equation 4.38 this current sensitivity is not by i is equal to nab divided by k a convenient way of the manufacturer to increase the sensitivity is to increase the number of turns n we choose galvanometer have the sensitivity activities of value required for by our experiment the galvanometer can also be used as a voltmeter to measure the voltage across a given section of the circuit for this it must be connected in parallel with that section of circuit further it must draw a very small current otherwise the voltage measurement will disturb the original set up by an amount which is very large usually we like to keep the disturbance due to the measuring device below 1% to ensure this a large resistance r is connected in series with the galvanometer this arrangement is schematically depicted in figure 4.26 note that resistance of the old meter is now rg plus r equivalence to r large the scale of the old meter is calibrated to read of the voltage value with ease we define the voltage sensitivity as the deflection per unit voltage from equation 4.38 not divided by v is equal to nab into 1 by v is equal to nab by k into 1 by r an interesting point to note is that increasing the current sensitivity may not increase the voltage sensitivity let us take equation 4.39 which provides measure of current sensitivity if n tends to 2 n that is we double the number of turns then not by i give rise to 2 into not by i thus the current sensitivity doubles however the resistance of the galvanometer is also likely to double since it is proportional to the length of the wire in equation 4.40 n tends to 2 and and r tends to 2 r thus the voltage sensitivity pi divided by 4 pi divided by v give rise to pi divided by v remains unchanged so in general the modification needed for conversion of galvanometer to an ammeter will be different from what is needed for converting it into a voltmeter thank you for being till the end i hope this has helped you if so give thumbs up like share comment save download and subscribe you can support us by following in other platforms that link is in the description well thank you see you later maybe never